different subject, which is always interesting. I like, I like that these are mixed up a little bit. And our next speaker is a good friend of mine. Her name is Linda Rosa. She has an awful lot of expertise in a lot of different areas. And uh, she has a lot of really uh, interesting past in the, um, the world of journals and therapeutic touch. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a subject today that is completely different. I have not a real good basis on this and I'm looking forward to this to uh learning more about attachment therapy so Linda it's all yours uh thank you I'm a virgin at zoom present presentation so I'm hoping this goes fairly smoothly um I think I've got this okay have you got this on your scenes Scheme, uh, screens, excuse me. Uh, no, I just see it. Um, how do I show my. So go down uh, to the bottom of your slides. screen, Linda. If you look at the bottom of your, your screen, it should have a little green oh, sure. box. Yes. And I do desktop one. Yeah. yeah, whatever your PowerPoint is on, that's the one you should share. Okay. Yes. And we can always go back if, if you need to, if you pick the wrong screen. We've all done that. So don't, don't worry too much. And, and if, if you have any audio in it, you needed to also check another box. Do you have any audio in it? Like a video of anything? Yes, I do. Yes. So when you share the screen, it will say, oh, that's changed. Oh, good grief. Oh, yeah. It should say optimize for video clip. There should be a little box right at the bottom on the left. After you, so if you click share screen, and I know, just share okay, click, okay, desktop one. So if you look at the bottom of that white box, it should say optimize for video clip. You need that uh, to check that box. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Perfect. Share sound. Yeah, share it worked. I think you also down. have to check the share sound. I'm not sure that they go together. The, the video clip uh, may mean if you're running a video in the background of your own, uh, you know, camera image. Yeah, I usually just check the one, but hopefully it'll work. We'll find out, I guess. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll mute myself now. All Thank right. You. Do you see this? See the slide now? Yes. Yes. Oh, you do. Okay, great. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about attachment therapy, too. I've been uh, with Advocates for Children in Therapy since it started 20 years ago when a 10-year-old girl was killed in a therapy session in Colorado. Our mission has been to oppose unvalidated and abusive psychotherapy for children. Uh, our main target has been attachment therapy, it's, it's such an awful practice that we thought 20 years ago that all we'd have to do is expose uh, that it's being done and it would end, but it has, alas, a lot of appeal for some people. I will have, be showing some uh, film clips of children being abused, and I'm trying to keep it down just to one minute because those are, those are hard to watch. Um, I've lost my, <laughs> excuse me, folks. Are we back? Okay. Yes. Uh, even in the mental health field, there have been some pretty awful contenders for worst, th worst quackery. But attachment therapy clearly ranks up there because its goal is to do nothing less than inflict physical and emotional pain, and main, mainly on adopted children. The torture goes on both in therapy and in the home because parents are considered co-therapists, and it robs children of their, ch their childhoods, sometimes their lives. Those who escape at age 18 
find a future, they face a future with no family support, poor, poor health, and little education. So what do these attachment therapists do? The therapists assume all children have been traumatized in early life, all adopted children, at which time they have repressed memories of that trauma. The therapists intentionally re-traumatize the child with hours of coercive restraint and aversives, such as knuckling their sternum or putting their hand over their face so they can't breathe. Rape is reenacted with the therapist lying on top of the child and licking the child's face. Attachment therapists claim this will regress a child back to infancy so that repressed memories can surface and infantile rage can be drained off with forced catharsis. After hours of this, when the child is reduced to a sort of whimpering little puddle, he's handed over to his adoptive mother to be cuddled and treated like an infant. This is ho it's hoped at this point that he will accept her authority over him and attach to her. Of course, all of this is just utter nonsense and but torture for the children. Uh, that picture on the lower left, you see a the therapist elbowing the uh, abdomen of a child. On the right is a form of holding therapy that's particularly painful and dangerous, subjecting the child to possible suffocation. And the boy in the middle is with attachment therapy, psychotherapy, uh, is it psychodrama? And his attachment mother is on the right and a therapist is over on the left. Uh, taking the role of his biological mother, who he never met, but uh, he has supposed to, uh, he's being forced to accept one and reject the other. This all started with Robert Zaslow and Martha Welch some 40 years ago. German psychologist Robert Zaslow and Columbia University's physician Martha Welch believed autism to be caused by attachment problems between mother and child. Zaslow happened to be the consultant for the last Elvis Presley movie in which Elvis did the first holding therapy session ever filmed. Elvis was really especially trying to be gentle with this girl, but it seems he was holding a real autistic child and she did not want to be restrained. After Welch was featured on the cover of Life magazine, she was successful in persuading a lot of parents of autistic children to restrain them, force the eye contact and demand affection. I have a film clip of Welch method uh, <coughs> attachment therapy uh, and that's uh, Martha Welch in the background. Uh, let's see, and little Stacy here is being has his mother has adoptive mother on top. We want you to love mommy. We want you to give mommy kisses. You are too stubborn. I need you to want me, say. Good care of you, Stacey. 
And I'm mad. I'm mad that you won't hold me and hug me and give me kisses. Give me a chance, thing. I say, give me a chance, give me a Enough of that. Uh, very shortly on, uh, little Stacy is threatened with not being able to eat that day if she doesn't give her mother kisses. And Zazzalo later came to Colorado to the school for school for the blind. He claimed that doing holding therapy with forced eye contact with blind children could cure them of blindness. That probably didn't work out too well, but a Colorado psychiatrist, Foster Klein, was very impressed with the holding therapy and set up a center, uh, the Attachment Center at Evergreen outside of Denver, which became the nation's go-to place for attachment therapy. Klein, claim that a child's inability to attach is the root cause of many other mental disorders but needs to be addressed first. He told parents that without this therapy, unattached children would become homicidal. And that probably scared the bejesus out of some parents, enough to get them to pay $10,000 for his two week intensive with 20 hours of holding therapy. After the intensive, many of these children were typically warehoused at the center for months or years. This center did a three hour training tape and I'll pay, play a clip from that. I should explain that this therapist, Neil Feinberg, is following a script. It's almost like a ritual. Uh, what, he, what he says to the child has nothing to do with the child's history. Here he assumes, as he does with all ch adopted children, that they hate their adoptive mother. Okay. Sorry. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, is Jack scared? When mom told you not to come out of your room, what did you do? You're going to go into your whiny, wimpy routine now? Is that what you're going to do? If you don't start dealing with the man inside of you, you're going to kill somebody. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. How often do you think about killing your mother? How often do you think about killing your mother? When I ask you a question, I expect you to respond. Got it? Got it. Got it. Got it. I didn't like that. Got it. I want it louder and snappier. Got it. Got it. How often do you think about killing your mother, CD? Often. Thank you. So you say that in a full sentence. I feel I don't like killing your mother often. What? Do I want mumbling here? Kick. I don't want you to mumble in here. Yes, Got it? Got it. Got it. Got it. How are you feeling right now? Scared. Do I want one word answers in here? No, no. No. I, I don't want one word answers. Got it. Got it. How do you feel about me being the boss right now? Do you like other people being the boss of you? No, no. Say, I hate it. I hate it. Is that the truth? Yes, no. Then you. Enough of that. Can you imagine? two hours, going through two hours of that. Uh, moving on, another hallmark of quackery is inventing your own disorder and then offering the only cure for it. Attachment therapists invented attachment disorder. And typical of a quack disorder, it has a long laundry list of signs to ensure that any child can be diagnosed with attachment disorder. These are just a few of the over 100 signs we've seen used. Typically, these children are said to be violent, destructive, manipulative, and with no conscience, and, for, and that the mother is the only one uh, many times who can see this. Even, you'll note there that even good behavior is a sign of this disorder, but they interpret it as a child who is stalking his prey. 
Without attachment therapy, adopted children are predicted to take on many or most of these behaviors until ultimately the, the repressed infant rage will make them homicidal. That's why attachment disorder is nicknamed Ted Bundy disease. Yes, they claim Ted Bundy disease, uh, Ted Bundy had attachment disorder. Also Hitler, Saddam Hussein, and Edgar Allan Poe. Because these children may identify with Satan, parents are advised to never let them pray because you never know who they are praying to. Interesting that uh, Mother Teresa is on, I would put her on the other end of that scale. Um, attachment therapy has roots, many, many roots. Some of them are in Freud's notion of regression, Bessel van der Kolk on repressed memories, Wilhelm Reich's character uh, armor that needs to be broken down, and psychiatrist Milton Erickson, the hypnotist who was very popular in the 1960s, who advised mothers to sit on children for hours uh, with a good book. Attachment therapists commonly teach that separation of the infant from the biological mother, uh, even at birth, creates a primal wound. Most of these therapists claim attachment begins in utero and that attachment disorder can be caused simply by a pregnant woman having a negative thought about her pregnancy. And, and when doesn't that happen? Others say attachment disorder can begin at conception when the poor defenseless ovum is attached, is attacked by, uh, by drunken sperm. On the science side of things, uh, we know that child development researchers think that attachment is, a very, is very robust in children with attachment behaviors beginning not, not at birth or in, uh, in, in utero, but uh, beginning around six months of age uh, and because of good, uh, re good reactions and good experiences with caregivers. This is the infamous Nancy Thomas, a layperson in Colorado who worked for years at the Attachment Center at Evergreen and became the leading proponent of attachment therapy parenting. I don't have time to call, cover much of the parenting side of attachment therapy. Briefly, the idea is to create children who are gratefully and unquestioningly, unquestioningly <laughs> obedient. That is the sign of attachment, they think. And think of it as creating little Stepford children. A child's bedroom is stripped bare. The child may sleep on the floor with a bucket to pee in, alarms on the door. Some, some survivors have told me the worst thing about the therapy and its parenting is to be hungry, is that they are hungry all the time. This sort of parenting is unlikely to create a happy family. So, it tend, so the methods tend to escalate oftentimes into extreme abuse. Reparenting is done at home as well as in therapy. This is forced age regression that is supposed to help redo the child's early development. The mother treats the older child like an infant or toddler with bottle feeding and also with bathing and dressing the child. Children are also at forced to do long periods of motionless sitting called strong sitting. And they do get put in cages. This, by the way, the state of Ohio funded holding therapy for this family with 11 adopted children. This couple started a support group for parents of children with attachment disorder. They were found keeping their four children in plywood cages the mother had made child size prison uniforms for them. And these, alas, are photos of some of the children killed by attachment therapy and its parenting. Many more have been, have been rescued, 
but found severely abused. Uh, many of them will have medical problems for the rest of their life. Uh, uh, starvation was very common. Uh, details of their cases, each case was horrific. Uh, the most well-known death is that of Candace Newmaker at the hands of two licensed social workers in Evergreen, Colorado. 11 hours of her therapy had been filmed and was shown at the, chair, at the therapist's trial, including the fatal rebirthing where Candace was wrapped for 70 minutes in a flannel sheet with 13 cushions and four adults pushing down on her. Her adoptive mother, a pediatric nurse practitioner, sat next to Candace's head and did nothing to save her while the therapist taunted her. Candace even tried to tell them she was dying, but they thought she was just trying to manipulate them. In the video, we could hear Candace vomiting and her agonal breathing at the end. It was a slow, horrible death that drove the, the jury to tears. The therapists were sentenced to 16 years in prison. The mother and the assistants got off quite lightly. We wrote a book trying to explain what in the Sam Hill those therapists and the mother were thinking when they ignored Candace's distress. We assisted the prosecutors for that trial and we continued to help other prosecutors understand what attachment therapy and the parenting is all about. We also have assisted families trying to rescue these children. We have a website, tells all about it, about these, uh, about the, the therapy and the parenting. And we've helped over 250 survivors who are members of a private uh, Facebook site. Some conversion therapy is based on the belief that homosexuality is an attachment disorder. Uh, they use, they refer to Martha Welch. We're beginning to see that where conversion therapy is and kids are being sent to attachment therapists. We've We've had a lot of war stories along the years. I don't think I have time to go through them all. The uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act has not been our friend, just any kind of bogus complaint and ISPs will drop you. Uh, there was a terrible judgment against one of our colleagues for continuing to speak up about attachment therapy being used in Utah schools. Uh, three slap suits against us caused us to lose uh, affordable liability insurance. And the craziest thing was one therapist or <coughs> um, hired a reputation repair committee, repair company to harass us. And they attempted to incite a jihad against us and Stephen Barrett, who has a uh, article about attachment therapy on Quack Watch. They set up a bogus website with our uh, home addresses and some uh, ghastly graphics about the, uh, uh, the profit. Uh, we have had successes. We got physical restraint therapy outlawed in Colorado, uh, meaning that physical restraint as therapy. But the therapist got around that by having the parents do the holding. Uh, better was when Craig Foster, Gene Mercer, and I worked on a problem of attachment therapy being funded in, by the Colorado Department of Human Services. The upshot after quite a while was that in 2019, Colorado became the first state to have guidelines for selecting science-based mental health therapy for people in care of the state. We were really thrilled about this because it not only affected uh, attachment therapy by any name, but also hundreds of other crazy therapies. And we hope other states will follow Colorado's good example. 
So uh, that was a lot to throw at you. You might be confused by that, but any questions? That was that was terrific ish. Um, I'm God. Who? Um, Adrian, can you can you spotlight me as well? Yeah, gosh, like, gosh, that was so emotional. Oh my! That God. was just horrible. I I've been near tears watching that. I I don't even know what to say. That I I knew I'd heard of. I mean, I knew this, and I'd known uh, now that I know about that. Um, well, thank you. I had known about uh, Candace. I'd heard about that as well. And I, I, oh my gosh, this is why it's so important. As Steen said, this is, or Klaus had said, this is why we have to do what we do. And to, and to, in the skeptic community. And I, and I'm throwing out the first thing because that's my prerogative. We don't have a lot of time. We can get to what we can. Um, just like with uh, facilitated communication, when you go and you look at the videos online, I want to make sure I point out that these videos that are up on these, that you could find about these, these aren't sting organizations. These aren't sting operations where somebody's filmed them and then snuckily put the videos up. These are videos that they put up, am I right? Because they think this represents them well. They, they're proud of this. They think this is this is good. I, I don't think they are posting them anymore themselves, but these, these were clips from training tapes. And they tend, according to the survivors, they're showing a more restrained way of treating children. Sometimes these things would really get out of, out of hand. Uh, so, uh, but yes, they, they were proud of this. They, they showed many of those clips that are on YouTube uh, on, on news programs and whatnot. They were, they were helping these horrific children to be turned around and nobody questioned the, the good intentions of therapists and adoptive parents. Okay, let's see if I can get through some of these questions. We got, we got almost 15 minutes. So I, uh, I just, I feel like something in the pit of my stomach. I'm glad you showed those videos as hard as it was to watch, but to have you just explain what was going on, I don't think has the power that those video clips did. And I can't imagine watching more. Okay. From Tracy, doesn't some regulatory agency have rules and guidelines on touching and restraint? Um, well, professional organizations do. Um, the, when you make complaints about these people, it goes to their licensing uh, boards. And many of the people on these licensing boards uh, will, if they're concerned at all, just give a slap on the wrist to these people. Uh, or they are already uh, think that this is uh, reasonable, accepted therapies. That's what happened with, uh, uh, you almost have to kill a child in order to get uh, some reasonable discipline of these therapists. Oh my God, I just feel sick. Um, okay, um, from Adrian, were there lawsuits as a result of this therapy? Uh, with Candace Newmaker? No, in general, I think she, she, she asked that question before you got to Candace. Okay, that's, that's probably the problem. A lot of times really awful uh, psychotherapy is controlled by something called uh, regulation by litigation. But in this case, the, survi the, the survivors of this are uh, leave leave their homes at age 18 uh, very damaged. They don't realize that they have only two years in order to file a lawsuit with the people who've been who tormented them. And it's often years later that they realize that attachment therapy wasn't, uh, wasn't legitimate therapy, but it's too late for them to file a, file a case. There was one girl in, I, I, in Iowa who recently 
uh, filed a successful case against her parents. Hmm. And that's that's it. One. So from Deborah, what are valid and effective approaches to adopt these specific issues, if any, especially for children who spend their infancy and early childhood in an institution such as the uh, children in uh, Romania? Okay. Um, there is another disorder called reactive attachment disorder, which is uh, a problem that children who have had extremely uh, neglective or abuse, uh, neglected or physical abuse in early childhood. Uh, it, uh, and it's, uh, it's a rare disorder. Uh, it is recognized in the DSM and it is described as the child being very, very withdrawn. Okay. And uh, the, there is no recognized therapy for it, but researchers are finding that when these children are placed in a good home, when the, peop when the parents are very responsive and patient with the child, the disorder uh, resolves itself in three years or less without therapy. Now the attachment therapist like to conflate attach their attachment disorder, their phony disorder with reactive attachment disorder. And they almost always refer to it as reactive attachment disorder, as RAD. And the parents refer to their kids as rad kids or radishes. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, next question from Tracy. Don't psychiatric and psychological treatments have to undergo scientific studies to demonstrate some kind of safety for psychological health and effectiveness? Or can just anyone with any bizarre theory just start treating someone? Yes, they can. Um, one of the, <laughs> the thing is, wh whether they're going to get insurance reimbursement, that's another reason why the attachment therapists say they treat reactive attachment disorder because, so that they can get um, insurance reimbursement. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a, can I, sh let's see, share this, share the screen again. And uh, show, let's see. I don't know what I've got here. Uh, let me let me just cut to the quick here. Um, I'm sorry. Um, she didn't share the screen. We're not seeing. I didn't see. Okay. I, there's a there was a study done. There was a study done a couple of years ago by two two researchers who went three months online to look at the websites and conferences that, of social workers. They found 480 some uh, bizarre quack practices that social workers were doing. Uh, it's an amazing list. I'll, po I'll post the link to it. If you ever want to feel like uh, the world of irrationality is closing in on you, just take a look at this incredibly long list of practices done uh, done by therapists. If we really want a downer, you mean another? Yeah, real loud. Oh, I mean, after after it, hearing the nine one one talk, and now yours, I'm just kind of like in need of a drink or something. <laughs> but I don't drink. Um, next question is from Brian Hart. I wonder if Linda knows about the episode of This American Life. It has a case of a successful attachment there. Mm -hmm. And he's got the link in the chat if you if you're not aware of it or not. I I I liked American this American life, but I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Do you know that? We, we oh yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, there was a Russian adoptee. And we complained bitterly and repeatedly because they kept re uh, re-airing that program. 
the therapist that poor boy went through uh, gave him a really hard time. Uh, one of, if you recall on my uh, my slides, there was a pic, there was a drawing of two parents sitting on top of a boy. That one of the therapists he was sent to was his method of, of therapy. Uh, so this was the power, showed the power of adopted children, uh, and I mean of adopted parents when they go to the media. Uh, the media is just not, does not question these methods. They take, take the word of the therapist and the adopted parents on how terrible these children are and, you know, some children may have serious problems, others may not, but it seems like a lot of adoptive parents are going into adoption for the wrong reasons. Your life, and they should definitely not be parents of any kind. Um, from uh, Ed, he wants to know, what was the legal basis for the $25,000 judgment? <sighs> Can you sum it up? Not, I'm not saying... I, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't seem to add up. Um, uh, our colleague was, a, worked for the school, school uh, district, and he was told repeatedly not to talk about attachment therapy being, being used at the school. And I think it was that he had defied um, this and that attachment therapy was was wildly popular in Utah at this time. We failed to get new, uh, legislation through the Utah legislature. And uh, actually the judgment was initially 100,000 got down to. So uh, it, it was long and drawn out. And, uh, and uh, um, I really, can't give you any more information at this time. Okay. That's something there. So from Karen, um, are the attachment disorders legitimate concerns that are treatable by su respected successful standard methods and this horrendous attachment ther therapy being a fringe, bastardized, ineffective, misguided offshoot from accepted practices or are attachment disorders non-existent in total? And she's yeah. hoping she's uh, clear. All all mental health prof national professional organizations have a code of ethics that uh, on they, <laughs> on touch. And it seems that they never even imagined uh, coercive restraint um, therapy, but it certainly violates uh, their their code of ethics on touch, and some of them have been making statements about coercive restraint as therapy as well, like this, like the social workers. So it, it's it's so far beyond what uh, practice should be. Right. Okay. Um, Jeff and. Adrian and other people want to know how you got you got your way into this in the activism role. I should say, um, Linda has has been involved in multiple um, alternative method kind of alt med kind of stuff. So this isn't her first rodeo, and <laughs> um, and so you, you can look her up and see some of the things she's been able to do. She's, she's really great at uh, doing, one of the things I've noticed that she's done that I've never been able to figure out is how to get a freedom of information, you know, file that form to get, um, get that information from somebody. But mm -hmm. how did you find yourself involved in this area? Well, with attachment therapy, it, there was the news on the line that this girl had died um, at the hands of these two therapists. And everybody thought, well, they, that is so crazy, that therapy, you know, uh, wrapping a kid in a, uh, up and suffocating her. We all thought that this was just two, two total nuts, okay? But what drew my attention to it was the mother was a nurse practitioner. And I wondered, what is a nurse involved in this? Uh, as far as being 
uh, it, involved in skepticism and whatnot. I was working in South America and the, the pseudoscience down there is so, it's just everywhere. I mean, if UFOs visit the United States, they live down in South America. <laughs> You know, and I saw the Zetetic and I got a, I got a subscription to that. And I loved reading about skepticism. And then when I had my daughter, I was home and puttering around the house and got all this uh, literature about getting a uh, continuing education in nursing by taking uh, courses on crystal healing and therapeutic touch. And I thought that's not in my profession. <laughs> so that's where it started. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, the last question I'm going to ask is from Jan and she asks, are you saying that there's no such thing as attachment disorder? And she disagrees that attachment behavior manifests around six months of age I would say that an early attachment is necessary for survival. It can go wrong if there's not consistent meeting of the child's needs. Well, yes, children need their needs met. Um, what was the first part of that? Is uh, that, are you saying there is no such thing as attachment disorder? Oh, oh, right. As the attachment therapist put it on their, their attachment disorder, that no child has that. Okay, that is just absolutely crazy insane. There is the reactive attachment disorder that I described that's rare with a withdrawn child. And then there are attachment issues, which is, can be fairly common with children who have, are foster children or attachment dis, or, or adopted children. Uh, but those, those are not really considered a disorder. As, as mm -hmm. that. Now, why they think, why researchers think that attachment and attachment is, and attachment begins around six or seven months is that, well, first of all, we don't know what's going on in an infant's mind, but it seems at that point, the, uh, the child is able to discern that there are individuals in the life, that there's me and there's other people who are taking care of me and that we can interact and whatnot. And it does it from birth until about six months or so. It really doesn't matter who is taking care of the child just so long as the child is getting needs met. There is really no at, uh, appearance of attachment to a particular child, according to what the, the researchers think at this time. Okay. So, uh, Linda, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I really appreciate it. I didn't really fully understand attachment therapy before this. Um, we hear people all the time talk about what we can do, how do we change the laws, what is it we got to do, and I know that it's way too complex of an answer of what to answer that. So, what I would suggest to anybody who, who finds this as important as I do um, and wishes they could just get these laws changed and so on, um, I assume probably to be in touch with you but the, and read the literature, read, the, read, read everything they can you know, about it. But more importantly is just having you speak about this today in our smallish group, and it'll go onto YouTube, and, and it'll be a video that can be shared, is just getting information about it. Um, we found that in facilitated communication as well as people don't believe that this actually is being done and it's so abusive. Mm -hmm. And just the fact of having the knowledge of this to understand it and be able to define it and know it exists, I think is, is powerful. So um, I really appreciate you talking today and, and uh, this horrible subject. I think I'm going to go find a cat and put it or something. <laughs> It's like awful. I'm sorry. It's it's, it's, a, a, it's a downer, but it's an important thing we should know. So just it, don't restrain your cat. Oh, <laughs> oh well, come on, a, man. I gotta touch a, that cat. That's a cat. Uh, <laughs> it's a good example of how extreme something can get when it's not restrained by good research. Absolutely. And there's a lot of this out there. Thank you, Linda. 
pop, pop, pop for everybody that's, <laughs> guys, this is important work and, and uh, Linda's doing it. Adrian, thanks, Linda. Adrian, can you flip me over to um, Robert? Oh, look at all these faces that are here now. Wow. So <laughs> with that downer, uh, we're going to be talking next to Robert Palmer, who is not